clicking the OK that you, we can record. And then I will turn it over. But one more person. I will turn it over to Kim. Thanks, Kim, for being here. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, my name is Kim Warren, and I have had the privilege of uh, being able to work at the Clemson Career Center for Professional Development for almost two years. And so I'll get a, a little bit of information about my background, and then we'll go into today's topic. So I worked at GE for 20 years, and when my husband retired, I wanted to decide what to do with myself. And I looked back on my career and thought through the things that I love to do the most. And, you know, they always say, if you're doing something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And so I loved my time at GE, but I wanted to find something I loved after GE. And I realized that when I was recruiting for GE, I was going to top universities um, across the United States and Clemson was a, is a top university that GE still recruits from. I loved connecting with the college students. I also ran a couple leadership programs. I ran a human resources leadership program and an engineering um, leadership program at GE, uh, helping college students to transition from their college careers into their corporate careers. And then later in life, I led recruiting for all of GE in the United States. And, and once again, some of the most fulfilling um, times I had was working with the newest employees, the ones coming right out of college. So when I moved to this area, I took a leap and reached out to Clemson to see if there was an opportunity for me to volunteer. And, and I was lucky enough to be able to work in the Career Center. So that's a little bit about me. And um, as part of my counseling sessions, our coaching sessions, I do meet with students in the fall and the spring um, for two days a week. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to have some connections like this and be able to make some presentations. And so today's topic, as you know, is on networking. And this is an area that's near and dear to my heart because so often people underestimate the power of networking. So we'll take some time today, share a little bit about how you can network and why you should network. And also you can share some of this information with your friends because everyone really should be expanding their outreach in order to um, strengthen their skills and perhaps expand their career. So today's topics you can see on your screen, we wanna talk a little bit about, you know, why should you network? You know, how do you network? Um, some of you are interning this summer, some of you are not. So we'll talk a little bit about how you can do that and also how you can network during the semester because, um, it should really be happening all the time. You just need to be aware of those opportunities. And one way that lots of people will network virtually, especially now, is through LinkedIn. And with my time working with the students, I am often asked to review LinkedIn profiles and to provide advice on LinkedIn profiles and how to maximize links, LinkedIn. So we'll take a few minutes toward the end and talk about LinkedIn, your profile, and how you can leverage it. At the very end, I'll give you a few snippets of advice, kind of summarizing the things that we've spoken about today. And as Heather mentioned throughout the presentation, um, feel free to enter questions in the chat um, and Heather will be moderating either throughout the presentation or at the end. So we'll definitely leave time for questions. So if you hear something and you wanna hear more, feel free to either unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat and we'll get to as many questions as we can. All right. So first, what is networking? Uh, a lot of people feel that it's something experienced people do. You do it to get your next job, you get it to be promoted, or they think networking is sucking up to your boss and it doesn't seem authentic. So I'll give you my thought about what networking is and hopefully it will ring true to you. So what I think networking is, is meeting others to exchange information and to create mutually beneficial relationships. Now that doesn't sound hard and it doesn't seem like you need to be a senior executive to do that. Exchanging information and creating mutually beneficial relationships. We can all do that. And we can do that on campus. We can do that during our internships, something we can all do. But before you start your networking, you should really know your goal. 
Is that goal to learn something new? Is that goal to achieve something? So I'll go to my next chart. And here are some things that you might be thinking about on why you would network. Because everyone's got their own, their own reason. So why should I even bother to do this? Why should I exchange information and create mutually beneficial relationships? Well, it can help you learn new things in your area of expertise and outside of it. And we can all use experience talking to others, especially now we've been in our bubbles for so long, reaching out and talking to people either virtually or in person can feel really uncomfortable. So making opportunities to get out of your bubble when you feel safe and it will strengthen your confidence and it'll, it'll enhance your communication skills. And if you don't wanna do it in person, then you can also develop these strengths virtually through email or through LinkedIn. Some people will use it for employment opportunities. Forever, the number one way to find a job has been through networking. And I'm sure your parents have told you that you know, a long time ago, you used to have to open the newspaper and look at the classified ads to find a job. And even then, when you couldn't surf the internet to find uh, career pages, even then, you couldn't find all the jobs in the classifieds. There were too many. It was too hard. You talk to people. You talk to friends. You talk to family. You talk to people in the industry. And they could help point you to a company that was hiring, or they may pass your resume along. So employment opportunities could be part of networking. or just contacts. You know, you're going to go into an exciting area when you graduate and someday you may think, oh, I, I spoke to that CFO when I was at Clemson and we had coffee at Starbucks and he said if I ever needed some advice to reach back out and now I've got a complicated finance project at my company, maybe I'll reach back out to him or her and ask a few questions. These people could be resources for you in the future. As I mentioned, mutually beneficial sharing. Not only will you be receiving information, but you should be sharing information. You know, you know things that they don't know. You probably know way more about technology. You're learning things at Clemson that are much more advanced than what, what they learned in college. You've got insights just from your generation that are different than theirs. So networking can benefit them as well. They're not just passing information to you, but you're passing information to them and they should find that valuable as well. And then lastly, for your resume, um, I, you know, Heather and I work with students all the time and we can be very creative with the work that you do and the experiences you have. And not every resume bullet has to be a job where you got a paycheck. If you had two or three meetings with someone in your career field over the summer, you know, could that be considered something like a shadowing experience or could that be considered a, considered a mentor relationship? That there might be opportunities based on the things that you've learned for us to help add that to your resume. So hopefully these are just a few ideas on why you would wanna step outside your comfort zone and start the networking process. So how do you start? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of intimidating. You know, who are you going to reach out to? The world's a big place and you don't have a lot of time because you're studying. So, you know, what I think you should do is look at clubs that you're in, volunteer opportunities, ways that you can get involved or use the involvements that you already have and make new connections. You know the people that you know, so feel free to learn from them, ask for advice from them but reach out to new people. You, you know, when you go to a party, it's, it's easy to stay with the people that you're already friendly with. And it's hard to walk up to a stranger and introduce yourself, but that might be what you need to do at your club or your volunteer opportunity is stretch outside your comfort zone, get to know new people and see if there might be somebody in that new social circle that may be a good person for you to network with. And of course you're, teaching assistants, your professors, um, people at Clemson that you interact with and on different staffs, they may have some ideas about people that could offer you some great advice or an opportunity to connect. 
and lots of you are doing things on campus, but you're also doing things in the community. So more opportunities to meet people. You're doing um, career fair. You're meeting, um, hopefully you're taking advantage of the opportunities where employers are coming to Clemson, either virtually or in person, and they're talking about their company and their career fields. And um, if they come on, on site or maybe you link in with them afterwards and say, I loved your presentation. And, and you know, if I wanted to learn more about um, bioengineering in your company, is there someone I could talk to? So an, another way for you to use um, events with future employers as a networking opportunity. And then of course, Clemson has guests that come in, thought leaders that come in, but don't necessarily just rely on Clemson. There could be lots of things through your professional organizations, maybe the Society of Women Engineers or any professional society that you're a member of. Feel free to reach out to them, um, connect with them either locally or virtually and see if there might be an opportunity to network. And then kind of an old fashioned one is family friends. Your dad, your mom, your aunt, your uncle, they might know people probably do in the industry they might be reluctant to give you that advice, you know, because they want you to stand on your own two feet and I'll offer it if they ask for my advice. So ask them, you know, is there someone that you know, mom and dad, in my future area of expertise that maybe I could connect with this summer or maybe I could talk to on the phone sometime just to learn a little bit more about the profession before I start interviewing. So do not underestimate that your family that you love and are close to may already know people that you should and could connect with. And then lastly, on this chart, your elevator pitch. And we can give you some advice on this um, if you come and see us or you wanna schedule an appointment. But if you don't know what an elevator pitch is, the way it gets its name is if you were stuck in an elevator, not stuck, if you were lucky enough to be in an elevator with a, that special industry person you've been dying to meet, you get 30 seconds between the time you both get out of the elevator and go to the lobby. You don't wanna miss this opportunity, what would you say? And it's a great way for you to summarize your value. You can demonstrate that you're confident and enthusiastic, throw in a few achievements, and hopefully by the time you would get to the lobby, that person would remember your name, be impressed by you, and maybe even be able to introduce you to people for networking. So that applies outside the elevator too. It applies when you go to a conference, if you go to the career fair, I mean, being able to practice a 30 second elevator pitch to a recruiter at a career fair will make you stand out. You'll be confident, you'll look them in the eye, you'll talk about yourself confidently, and it works with all of these contacts as well. Anyone we talk about during this network presentation would love to hear your 30 second elevator pitch about who you are, what you're looking to do, what achievements you've accomplished, maybe what you wanna do with your career. So that's something that you should definitely um, be prepared for. Okay, so this summer, um, some of you, we talked about what to do during the semester, but everybody's got a wonderful summer, whether you're working um, in your area of expertise, whether you're not going to school, doesn't really matter. I'm just throwing out a couple a couple of ways here. So I've got things that you can do at a summer internship, or if you're not at a relevant summer internship in the middle of the page, we'll talk about some ideas there too. So you're at that summer internship, it's in your sweet spot. You might be in person, you might be virtual, so it gets a little trickier. But get to know people, don't just stay in your little bubble. Find out you know, who you're working with, um, if you can't see them in person, see if you can't make an appointment just to introduce yourself and learn what they do. And maybe they'll give you some advice and maybe they'll give you some insight to the company. And, you know, we have the old adage about the water cooler conversation, you know, the conversations you have in the break room where people give you some advice and introduce you to people. But if you're not in the office, then it gets a little trickier, but definitely try to get to know your coworkers and their roles and always ask if they have any advice. At these same meetings, you can learn about the business, but you can also do this on your own. You can you know, re do some research about the company on online, see what the industry is saying about that, the company. 
And then when you talk to people, whether it's your boss, your colleagues, your coworkers, ask questions and, and show your show that you're curious and that you really are interested in this industry and this opportunity. And lastly, this takes a little bit of a bold step, but you can consider it if it's the end of the summer and you love this company, you, your coworkers have been so nice, they've given you advice, you've networked, you, you want to come back to this company, you really hope they make you an offer. Well, you can take that first step, you can be bold. And if you're graduating, you can ask them about um, the opportunities for the future for full time. You know, when will they be looking at full time opportunities and express your extreme interest in the company? Or if you'd like to come back next summer, ask about that too. Be bold and don't just wait for them to come to you. If you love it, try to reach out and grab it. Now, let's say you don't have a relevant summer work opportunity. You know, COVID has really limited. Um, the jobs that are out there and some employers were reluctant to bring in students. So if you are going to school or you have a, a non-relevant summer job, that's fine. It's, it's wonderful resume fodder and we can definitely help you to build your resume with that. But now you have to reach a little harder for your industry. So try to use the summer to make connections, more connections in the community. So let's say that you are a finance major this might be bold, but can you walk into um, one of the local, uh, like Edward Jones and introduce yourself and tell them you're a finance major and you're at Clemson and you're here for the summer. And would, could you talk to someone about the career field and ask a few questions? It's highly likely that they'll have a break in their day sometime in the next couple of weeks and they would probably love to share with you why they do what they do and answer your questions. You could ask, um, Anybody that you know that's in the space about opportunities to volunteer. So maybe you didn't get that paid opportunity in your career field, but it doesn't mean you can't get a relevant summer experience. So can you go to, let's say you're in the medical field um, or you want to be, can you go to the hospital and see what volunteer opportunities are there? Can you connect with uh, local uh, medical practices to see if there's an opportunity for you to shadow? If you're in, um, PRTM, you know, can you do a cleanup project at the local park and meet, you know, meet interpreters and ask them questions. So just because you're not getting a paycheck doesn't mean that we can't help you build a meaningful resume in your space. And again, you're going to be able to meet people in your preferred career field. And something that's always kind of low um, risk and a lot of people are welcoming to it is just a cup of coffee. You know, start, you know, meet at Starbucks and have a cup of coffee. It's, you're not invading their office. Um, it's neutral territory, you know. So, I mean, when Starbucks are open again, you know, a lot of the, them aren't open quite yet to patrons. But um, maybe just a cup of coffee. It doesn't have to be lunch. It doesn't have to be a meeting. Something low key like that, a lot of people will take you up on your offer and they'd be glad to share and give you some advice. So we'll go to LinkedIn now. So um, one, th uh, one thing I'm gonna go back on my previous chart. One thing I forgot to mention is um, asking questions. You know, I, I know I mentioned it a couple times here, but asking questions is just so important because that's where you're gonna get that great information that you're gonna be able to carry forward. And they may even recommend other people that you could talk to in this space that can continue your networking journey. Okay, so LinkedIn, I'm gonna just flash ahead and just remind everybody what a LinkedIn profile looks like and we'll bounce back and forth between my profile and my advice. So professional headshot, you know, none of us like the way we look on camera, but and when I say professional, I don't mean it has to be, you know, a professional photographer, but it shouldn't be a grainy, photo and today if today's phones um, a lot of you can get a wonderful photo but just get a second opinion make sure your photo looks professional and whoops and it's close enough that people can see your face so if they were to meet you let's say for a cup of coffee they might recognize you walking into starbucks so um, we don't want a full body shot probably you know this about this close not necessarily a candid 
But if you wanted to do something candid, let's say you are in the iCar program and you're doing something fun with race cars, that's where you can use this banner, right? So mine is supposed to be the lovely mountains of the Carolinas where my husband and I retired, but yours could be something fun about Clemson. I see a lot of Clemson tigers and see a lot of orange and purple up here, but maybe there's something that you can put into your banner to show a little bit about your personality and your passion. Now, I'm not open to finding a new job, but if I were, um, that there would be this kind of a banner around my picture right here. And the way you would turn that on is you would click on open to, and you would click the drop down that said, you know, new opportunities. And it would stamp your, not only your profile picture with open to opportunities or looking for a job or something like that, but also if recruiters are searching the profiles in LinkedIn, they may stumble on you. You might get lucky and get found by a recruiter. And how great would that be um, for a recruiter to knock on your door and talk to you about interviewing? So that's something that um, you should definitely look at. Then there's the about section. Okay, I just had, that's down here, but I had to grab it over here so you could see it. And with the about section, it should be short. Now mine's a little long, but you know, I do have 30 years of experience, so I felt like I could have a longer one, but you, I would suggest it probably fit on this screen. And you can see at the bottom right, you know, mine, you, I have to actually click to see it all, which is fine, it's only one extra step. But if a recruiter is looking at hundreds of profiles, it would be great if they didn't have to make that extra click to learn about you. So my suggestion would be that you utilize the about section, but that you get everything you want to say or everything you really want that recruiter to see in these first three lines so that they don't have to click the about section. Or maybe if they click the about, it's your secondary information. And don't forget that your LinkedIn profile is your expanded resume. For most of you, we're working with one page and we have to be very concise and use the white space. But for LinkedIn, those things that you had to cut, those honors from high school, those sports that you do at Clemson, um, some of those jobs that maybe that didn't fit or relevant coursework that doesn't fit, there's so much that you have to offer that may not be fitting on your resume. And so more will fit in LinkedIn. So don't just, you know, have job titles, you know, use the bullets on your resume and maybe a few more. Feel free to um, add relevant coursework, if it's, especially if it's not on your resume. Awards, maybe you picked up awards in high school that, we cut, that were cut from your resume because of space. Utilize it and really showcase who you are. And then at the bottom of um, your LinkedIn profile, there's an opportunity for you to follow. You can follow, most everyone follows Clemson and you know, maybe some you know, influencers that they particularly like. But now you can start thinking about those targeted companies. If you're interested in, I don't know, General Mills or L'Oreal or General Motors, start following them. And here's a trick. Sometimes when recruiters are searching, one of the first things they'll filter on is who's following my company. Then who is a, let's say a mechanical engineer because that's what they're hiring for. And then who is open to opportunities, boom your profile could show up. So it would be great if you were also following targeted companies and influencers. And then also, as you know, within the feed, if they're talking about a seminar they have coming up or a job that they have posted, it may hit your feed. So now you've got this great LinkedIn profile and now what are you gonna do with it? Okay, so first of all, you should think about a message. And I don't have this as a bullet on here. We're gonna talk about it and then we'll talk about what to do with it. You need to have a short message you know, that you send to them, not a long convoluted message that they won't have time to read because you're asking for a favor, you're asking for time, you're asking for a referral. So it needs to be short, it needs to be clear and it needs to be um, tailored to what you want. Um, don't just spam everyone with the same message. You know, it should maybe 
maybe you're going to tell them, I also went to Clemson and I was also a mechanical engineer and, and I'm really passionate about, um, I'm really passionate about Cummings engines and I, I'd love to work on the assembly line, blah, 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 blah. You know, nice, short and targeted. And then when you're contacting someone at Ford and you're talking about design, then you can talk a little bit more about that. So people can really read a form letter. So try not just to have one version, try to have a, a short, targeted, clear version focused on that person. And then you should put a modest ask in there. Just, you know, what are you looking for? Are you just looking to connect? That's easy enough, they can just accept. Are you looking for to meet, meet someone in the company? Are you looking to learn about the work environment? So if you wanna ask them something, just make sure it's short and to the point and make sure that if a busy person's taking a look at it, that they'll quickly read it and decide if they're going to respond. And before I get into this page, I'll also remind you that um, be resilient because you might have a 90% fail rate. Maybe only 10% of the people you reach out to might respond. So be persistent, be resilient, and um, hopefully you'll get a few key responses to your outreach. So who are you going to look for? Well, you know, I've got Clemson all over this page. If you are interested in Alcoa, pull up Alcoa and pull up search on people who went to Clemson and maybe you have a few people that you can reach out to. They might be strangers, but they might open your, your message. Uh, or in, in person, not in person, sorry, people that you know already. We talked on an earlier chart about making connections. So you're volunteering, you're in clubs, you're attending industry seminars, you're meeting all these people. Do you go home and look them up on LinkedIn and try to connect with them? It's not a bad idea. They, they should remember you. They just met you yesterday. So maybe now it's time for you to expand your network. And if you look, I mean, I have over 500 connections, which is just a lot of that is just me reaching out to people that I've met recently or people reaching out to me that have met me recently. So think about those people that you're meeting in person and um, try to connect with them, whether they're currently at Clemson or they're just currently involved with Clemson in any way. Then think about those people that you really admire that are in your major that graduated already. Where do they work? They haven't forgotten you. Maybe you reach out to them just to say hi. Maybe that's your clear, concise messages. I just wanted to connect and say hi, and I hope you're doing well. I'm graduating soon and I'm looking for an opportunity in such and such. And I just wanted to make a connection with people at a few companies. Or it could be, would you mind talking to me for a few minutes? Or could I send a few questions to you through email? Or your extracurricular activities. Um, if you're in a fraternity or a sorority or a professional club, if you were connected to these people in person, hopefully they'll reconnect with you virtually or in person in the future. And then recruiters at targeted companies. So if you wanna work for a company that you don't know anybody in, you can't find any Clemson Tigers that work there, and you're really interested in random house publishers, see if you can't find a recruiter at random house publishers and just do a cold call on LinkedIn and see if you can message them. Sometimes recruiters are building up a big stack of potential candidates for the future. And, and who knows, they may accept your outreach and may be willing to answer questions for you about that company. So in addition to you reaching out and connecting with people all by yourself without ever talking to other people, you can comment. Remember these people that you were following on this previous page, you were following targeted companies and influencers. They say something really interesting in your feed. Comment on it, like it, celebrate it. Put one of those little light bulbs on there saying it's insightful. Um, share something. Remember we said networking was mutually beneficial sharing. Comment, say something really insightful and you never know where that might lead. And then not just responding to other people, but posting original content. If you're learning something amazing in school, 
or in an organization, or you're proud of some amazing volunteer activity and some fundraiser that you are responsible for, feel free to post some original content. And especially if it's relevant, you know, let's say um, a fundraiser you're responsible for and you want to do event planning, that's perfectly suited to what you want to do. That would be a great post. Just make sure it's professional. And if it's relevant to what you're doing, who knows whose feed it's going to show up in. And remember all those people you're following now, all these people you've met at Clemson, past graduates, they may see it in their feed if they've accepted your contact. And who knows, someone may be reaching out to you to either connect or to talk about opportunities. Oh, and then also, um, I, I, I forgot to mention is endorsing um, contacts. So sometimes LinkedIn will feed you a little pop-up that says, hey, you know Heather, and would you endorse Heather for um, this particular skill? And then you say yes or no, and then it asks you a few questions. So feel free to use that if you can endorse your contacts for different skills. Um, they get a little note in their feed that say, you know, Heather would get a little note in her feed saying, Kim endorsed you for um, student counseling or student coaching. And so she would know that not only am I following her, but I'm also praising her on LinkedIn. So that's something else you could do. Okay, so this is gonna be my last chart before Heather starts um, sharing questions and answers um, or questions, I'll have answers. Um, so if you're thinking about anything you wanna ask, feel free to start using the chat function if you haven't already. Okay, so first of all, this is gonna take some time. As I mentioned earlier, don't be surprised if you only have a 10% hit rate. So you need to be diligent and focused and, and take the time to, to, to do the LinkedIn part, to go to the clubs, to attend the industry seminar, to talk to your professors. This takes time. You don't have to do everything in my presentation, of course, but just if you pick out two or three things, just know that it takes some time. So this summer might be a great time for you to do that. So number two, when you are networking, exude positivity and confidence. And I'll give you a prime example here. So um, I might ask Sally, hey, Sally, what did, what did you do last summer in the area of um, Med, in the area, area of pre-med. Sally might say, oh, well, I didn't do anything in, last summer. You know, we had COVID and I couldn't get an internship. And so I just, I went home and I was a lifeguard, but it was fun. Or Sally could say, you know, unfortunately my internship at this particular um, location fell through. I wasn't able to um, continue it because of COVID. However, I made sure I to um, participate in some activities relevant to my major. And one thing I wanted to do to strengthen my life-saving skills for my pre-med degree is I took an opportunity to lifeguard at home and I had actually two opportunities to use my CPR and I'm happy to announce that both of them are, you know, are, are safe and uh, had no repercussions. Two very different ways to talk about last summer. One is not confident or positive and one is. And the person you're networking with is going to have, obviously have a stronger reaction to the second version. And, you know, it also makes you likable, leaves that great impression. So resilience, I mentioned this earlier, may take time. You may get a lot of no's. Um, you may get a lot ignored a lot if it's virtual, if it's in person, they may turn you down for coffee. I'm sorry, I can't do coffee. I'm sorry, at Edward Jones, we don't allow people to come in and shadow us because what we do is very confidential. You know, be prepared for some no's, but you're going to get some yeses. I assure you, if you're positive and confident and you're doing the right outreach, you're going to get yeses. And then quality over quantity. You only need one or two this summer to help you 
with your, you know, your career goals or your learning goals. You don't need 30. So yes, you may shoot for 30 outreaches and hope you get 15, but if you get two and they're great, then that's two amazing ones that you can leverage and you can have that mutually beneficial relationship where you're sharing and you're learning. And so um, the next one would be that elevator pitch, all right? So we talked about if you're in person, what are you gonna say in those 30 seconds? But also that, you know, that little LinkedIn note that you're gonna send, so that might be kind of an elevator pitch in writing. And what is that gonna look like? So make sure you're ready to talk about yourself and to promote yourself in this, with this experience as you're networking with people. And then um, ultimately, it's about relationship building. And I said at the beginning that it's a mutually beneficial experience where you're learning from them and they're learning from you. So keep in mind that everything won't become a relationship. It might be a one-off, might be 10 minute conversation. Um, remember that they can learn from you too. So feel free to comment. If they're talking about something in the news, just don't nod and be quiet. You've got a perspective, you've got insight. Feel free to share with them what you think because remember your generation is thinking different things than their generation. Your, the atmosphere on your college campus is different than their business, um, their business environment. You have a truly special and unique perspective and I think they would love to hear it. And then ultimately with this relationship building, um, remind, remember just etiquette, right? So if you are lucky enough to get a hit and someone has spent some time with you, sending them a thank you note and it doesn't have to be formal, doesn't have to be on paper, right? You know, just dropping them a note through the same mechanism that you first reached out to them. Um, or getting their email address and sending a polite little note saying how much you appreciated it. Um, that is something that people don't get often enough and they really know how much you appreciate their time when you send a thank you note. Maybe in the future, in addition to that thank you note, um, you might give them an email update you know, or you might just send them something. You know, I thought about our conversation six months ago and here's a news article I read and thought I'd share it with you. And, and you're not really expecting anything. Um, or maybe you'll just follow up with them. Maybe six months from now, you'll reach back out. Hey, remember me? Um, maybe even attach it to that thank you note so that they can put two and two together. Just forward your thank you note back to them and then put something else on top of it. This is, I had such a wonderful experience talking to you about the dentistry career field last summer. And I was just wondering as I'm applying to dental schools, would it be possible for us to get a cup of coffee and I could get some advice from you? So the relationship may be small, it may be longer term, but it'll be different for everyone. So um, that will be the presentation I've got for today. I really wanna take questions. We've got about 20 minutes. I don't know how many questions are there, but this is such an important area for us all to talk about. So Heather, I'd love to hear what students would like to know more about. Yeah, so the first question we have is, what are some common mistakes you see people making when networking? I think, um, one, they're asking for too much. Um, oftentimes, you know, they, they follow all these guidelines, but they're asking for a job. You know, that they may say, I'm graduating from Clemson. You work at Kraft. I'd like to work at Kraft. Do you know where I can get a job? And I think that's too big an ask, unless this is a person you already know, maybe it's a fraternity brother from, from campus and you know them well, that might be an okay ask, but for a complete stranger, that's probably too big an ask. So I would say make your ask a little more modest, maybe advice or conversation. And then secondly, and this mostly applies when you're in person, is I gave you my example about the confidence, you know, the the woman um, who was a lifeguard over the summer because her internship fell through. I see too often amazing Clemson students are a little reluctant to look someone in the eye and talk boldly about themselves and proudly about themselves. So I would say that is something that you need to work on if, you, if you're also a very modest person and you have that hard time, uh, practice a little bit, um, making your voice confident using eye contact, 
body language, confident body language. You know, you can use all of these same ideas in an interview, but you're, it's kind of like a mini interview sometimes when you're networking. So I would apply all of those confidence um, ideas to a networking experience as well. Great. So the next question is, can you expand more on how to use current contacts or recruiters to find employment opportunities? Sure. So you would um, you could send them and that's, that's a great question because you've already made these contacts um, from the past. So just giving them, maybe giving them an update, you know, you know them through some mechanism, providing them an update, you know, graduating soon, or I'm just starting to look for my internship for next summer. Um, and at that point in time, because you've already connected with them, if you've got a relationship with them, maybe your ask could be a little bigger. Like we said, maybe it could be, do you know of any, any employment opportunities? But otherwise, for your, current, for your current network, think about how they could help you. Can they give you advice about getting into dental school? Can they give you advice what it's like to work in New York City? Can they give you advice about what it's like to be um, you know, an apprentice on a program? So they're a connection of yours for a reason. So I would see what it is that that person could offer you and tailor your short, clear, but concise note to them and, and see if they would either get on the phone with you, meet you in person, or maybe receive an email from you where they can answer some questions for you about whatever it is that they have to offer. Great. Okay, the next question is, for people most likely heading into research or medical school to that route, what is the best way to approach networking? Well, I think any anyone that's in that profession, if you want to go home to your hometown for the summer or locally in the Clemson, Seneca, area, Anderson area, is um, maybe you know, seeing, there's going to be some people who have already taken shadows from Clemson. So I think you could network two levels. One, you could talk to your professors, your TAs, your more senior students in your major and see where they've been able to shadow and see if you can't have them make an introduction. You might, be, might do some cold calling. You might be reaching out in the local area to see if you could do some shadowing or getting some advice about um, how to excel in a medical school interview. So some of that could be you going into the office. Some of that could be you making a phone call. Um, and don't forget, we talked about at home, your parents, your relatives, they may know someone that they could make an introduction to. And you could also ask them, again, either for a shadowing opportunity, advice getting into medical school, or just, again, a cup of coffee and see where it goes. You know, you're, you're in the profession that I want to be in. If you ever get a chance to take a break and you'd be welcome to a college student asking you a few questions, um, could I buy you a cup of coffee and see where it goes? That's great, that's great. Uh, one thing I've noticed is there are a couple of the um, hospitals in the area have on their website um, volunteer opportunities. There's quite a process and sometimes they, sh they have shut it down, but those will be opening up pretty soon. I would, I would assume in the next six months or so, we'd probably have those open back up. So that's great. And, and I love and I love that Heather. Let's not forget those volunteer opportunities for all career fields. Excuse me. We can help you build that into a resume bullet. So um, you know, reach out to us when you're done your interview. Your, yeah, when you're done your um, volunteer opportunity this summer, reach out to us and we'll definitely help you build that into a strong resume component. Yeah, and you get to meet so many people when you're volunteering from all walks of life. So that's great. So we have another question. How would you approach networking and LinkedIn following when you don't know what exactly you want to get into or what industry you might want to go into? Okay, that's a tricky one. Uh, you might have stumped me on that one. Um, well, I mean, you know some possibilities. So that's maybe when you start um, casting your net wide. Maybe you're not contacting people yet. Maybe you're still just reaching out to companies. And I think you know, you know what companies you admire. Um, you know what companies are being run well. Maybe you get some advice from your professors or your parents on companies that you should be paying more attention to, but it might be a little early for you to reach out to a person on LinkedIn because um, one thing that we uh, who receive these notes um, struggle with is if they ask, one, if the ask is too big, we talked about that, 
but two, if the ask is too broad. So imagine if you went to a recruiter at the career fair and said, you know, I've got a 3.8 in business and I'm ready to do anything and I'll do whatever you want. And I don't know what I want to do, but I'm open to anything, but I definitely want to work at Chase. That's, it's too broad. They can't, they can't see you working for them oftentimes because it's too broad. So I think you really, I suggest that um, talk to your professors, um, even taking the um, strong interest inventory that Heather could um, share um, could be an idea, but when you network, uh, my personal experience is, is I prefer to have a narrow ask. If you're not sure what you want to do, you may not be able to achieve that narrow ask in a, in a personal email. Um, Heather, can you share a little bit about the strong interest inventory if that might help them? Yeah, and that's something that we, we definitely can help you if you're not quite ready to dive into talking to companies. We have self-assessments, we have the strong interest inventory, the type focus, we have some things we can point you to online. And there are certain resources like the Occupational Outlook Handbook and the ONAT resource where you can actually investigate different opportunities. And it's almost like an informational interview without actually talking to someone. So you can find out like, what do they actually do every day? And what are the skills that are needed? And is this something interesting to you? Then you can move along with that. So we do have the strong interest in inventory available to students and you can find it on our website. If you can't find it, just email me and I'll help you find it and give you some of that information. So. That's always, uh, it's a hard one, but it's a good one to start looking into. If you're not sure, that's what we're here to help you with. So. And you'll be surprised at the results. It came, I still remember when I got my first one and um, it said, I, I think I'd be good as an IRS auditor. What was that, that, you know, but what it was telling me is I'm analytical, I'm precise, I'm good with numbers, I'm good with details. So it wasn't the job that was so much um, illuminating to me. It was the characteristics that I had that suggested to the tool that this might be a job I was good at. So I took those characteristics that the tool said I was good at and I actually pointed them in a different direction, but it's very illuminating. They are, they are, and you're right. Some of them come up with uh, these uh, occupations and you think, well, that doesn't quite fit me, but then you can see why when you start really looking at it more critically. We have another question about the elevator pitch. What do you think would be the most relevant information one can mention? Well, I think you should definitely, um, you're obviously introducing yourself. You're letting them know um, what kind of stage of your career you are in. You know, I'm either graduating from Clemson soon or I'm you know, a current student at Clemson. An area that you're passionate about or an area that you have a strong interest in. And then letting them know, um, you know, maybe something unique about yourself, you know, how you develop this passion, or maybe a work experience you had last summer that um, strengthened your, your interest in this area. But you only really have so much time, you know, I say 30 seconds, but it could be 20 seconds. So there's really not that much you can share, but those would be a few ideas. You know, the elevator pitch, it's, it sometimes feels too rehearsed and too forced, but if you practice it enough, it becomes more natural. Right. And, and like you said, tailoring it a little bit more to what you're looking for, I think is so, so important. So um, I don't see any other questions. We'll give them a, a minute if anyone wants to pop one more in the chat or if you decide you want to unmute yourself. Um, Kim, I had a question for you. Sure. When we are talking with students about um, connections with um, with people in the industry. And some of them want to just hit the connect button on LinkedIn, but our recommendation is to send that message. What do you think most recruiters, employers, and just people in general feel about just hitting the connect and getting that generic message? I think they'll ignore it. Um, the only time I hit that connect button is when I know you. You know, I, in fact, I think I hit it with Heather the other day. You know, I'm like, wait a minute. We're not connected and i just hit the connect button because i know heather and i was surprised we weren't linked in or linked in already so that is the only time i would use it when you are certain they know you you're pretty sure they're going to click accept and you're trying to save yourself some time you go ahead and do that but generally speaking it'll you'll serve yourself much better by customizing that note 
That's what I thought. Um, we have one question about, would you be willing to share your contact information? Um, sure, sure. Um, uh, let me do it on verbally oh, now, Heather. I can put it in the chat. Tell okay. me, what is your email? Oh, kim.warn2 at gmail. And you have an E on your name, right? Kim yep. to at Gmail. Yep, and I'll go back to the beginning so you can see how my name is spelled. Also, I do do count, um, coaching um, in the fall and the spring. Uh, I believe I'll be working Mondays and Wednesdays. I haven't gotten my schedule yet for the fall. But if, and I typically do resume reviews, interview prep, and then you know some general career advice. And one thing that I was talking to um, my my boss at this career center about is I would strongly suggest anyone who is going into interviews, take advantage of us for mock interviews. If you have an upcoming video interview, sign up with me or one of the other counselors to do a mock video interview. If you've got an in-person interview, sign up to do a mock in-person interview. Um, Heather, are we, are we offering in-person? Um, we will be. So, okay. um, you know, right now, just go ahead and reach out to us if you need to. I know that this particular group, they're going to be attending a lot of our sessions this summer, and some of those may have to do with that. Um, um, I think I put in the wrong email address. Kim.warn2 at gmail.com. Yeah, so sorry. Let me put, I put in k.warn. Thanks, Beth, for letting me know. <laughs> Beth is my backup to um, moderating for me. There you go. Let me type that in there. Um, you can get in touch with us with um, just emailing the CU Career Center at gmail.com, but they are gonna be um, meeting with a lot of the counselors over the summer to go over some of the information. So we wanna make sure that you all can get in touch with us. My name, you can get in touch with me. I've, I sent an email with all the, the follow-up to you guys. So you're welcome to email to me. We'll get you connected. We'll make sure you get appointments when needed. And when Kim's back on the docket, we'll get you scheduled with her if we need to as well. Thank you, great. And, and definitely just get more comfortable. Again, we gave you a lot of information. We certainly don't expect you to do it all. Just find things that resonate with you. You know, if you're already in a club, how can you leverage the club more? If you see industry seminars being offered by the Career Center and you're not joining in, maybe you sign up for a few more. Maybe you attend that lecture now that we're coming out of our COVID bubbles in the fall that you wouldn't normally attend because you were studying, but maybe you can balance your time a little differently and see who you could meet at that industry lecture. So just find a few ways to step outside your comfort zone. Make sure you're you know, dressed professionally, I don't mean you have to wear a suit to the industry lecture, but you might want to, you know, you might want to not just come straight from the gym, you know, so you might want to be just a little nicer when you're at that event and remember that elevator pitch. Um, so in case you meet someone at that event that you think would be a great networking opportunity, you're confident, you're able to go up to them and you're able to introduce yourself and see if you can't make that connection. I think this has been really, really helpful. If anyone has any other questions, they're welcome to pop them in the chat. Um, but Kim, thank you so much for you know spending time with us today. Sorry guys, I put in like four different emails for Kim, but I think I finally got the one right. Thanks again, Beth. Um, just you know, be in touch with us. This professional development certificate, we want to make sure that uh, you all understand, know what you're what you're getting into. I think you all do. But if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those at the end. If you want to stick on for a minute, and I don't see any other questions coming into the chat, so I get a bunch of thank yous though. So thanks, Kim, for all your time. Everyone's thanks to everyone for um, reaching out on this topic. It it's a topic that will serve you well not only now but practicing now, even if it makes you a little uncomfortable, is going to be so valuable in the future because in every profession, in, in your first job, you'll be able to use all these skills in your first job to learn more about the company, to expand your horizons, to make, you know, make new friends and make new business contacts. This is something that will last you a lifetime. And, and then when you're doing things with your children's school and you're doing things, you know, business trips, when we start doing that again, these skills and practicing these skills will serve you very well. You just have to be a little comfortable with being uncomfortable and reach out. Great. All right. Well, thanks everyone for being here.
Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.